So here we are, camped on a sand cave in the middle of the ocean. Long way from nowhere and it's now been three months at sea on the great adventure. Let's take a quick look back at how the hell we ended up here. So we put the Salty Dingo in on the northeast coast of Australia, hoping for an adventure island hopping up an unknown coastline while getting back to basics living off the land and ocean. Day one, we camped in the rainforest on a riverbank. Day two, the Salty Dingo headed offshore and we set up camp on our first of what would be many tropical islands, naively excited for what was planned to be a month holiday. As we continued the journey north, we came across a pod of huge humpback whales. And this was a quick reminder of how small we are out here on the big blue. Day 10, we had an amazing crayfish dinner. The trade winds had now well and truly set in with a consistent southeast wind making the trip north a wet and rolly ride. As we continued north, we headed out to the Great Barrier Reef and then by day 15, we retraced Captain Cook's steps with some Australian history and got up close and personal with some sharks. With a break in the wind, we headed east and by day 20, we found our favourite snorkeling spot ever. Back in the Salty Dingo we go and a few days later on, day 22, we hand catch mangrove jacks, but this day was overshadowed by a day I wish to never relive. We lost the boat. Day 25, back on the Salty Dingo, we find Pelagic Paradise and Fran Spears her first dog tooth tuna. What a fish. A few more days on the open ocean and day 28, we realise we have now well and truly entered croc country with big slides all around our usual hoped camping spots. Day 32, we watch a hammerhead shark feeding on stingrays. Back on the big blue we go and the salty dingo continues north. By day 35, we find an epic fishing spot where I catch the biggest nanny guy of my life on a hand line. We continue weaving through a labyrinth of reefs. Over the next week or so, we gorge ourselves on crayfish in this tropical paradise. We then have some really wild weather, winds up to 50 knots that blow the salty dingo into the coast to look for some shelter. So we bunker down and go barra fishing. This one over a metre will go down as a life highlight for me. The time finally comes so we can once again head offshore, although some rough weather's doing its best to turn the salty dingo into a submarine at this point. Come day 66, we run out of water, but in far better news, we meet up with my best mate Az who, along with a group of mates, are having a crack at paddling to the top of Australia. Crazy bastards. But we can't stop here. Back in the boat we go and it now feels like the salty dingo is getting smaller and smaller with every week that goes on. But we keep chugging north. Day 70, we refill our supplies with some fresh water from high up a river. The weather is once again too rough to get out to the reef so we're forced to hug the coastline and rivers north. Day 78, we get stalked by a large crocodile for a couple of days. Day 79, and Fran decides she's ready for kids. Day 80, uh, we're quickly shown that we're not quite ready for parenthood yet. Back in the dingo and off we go. Day 81, we run out of water again, but are given a gift from the gods. Or the previous shipwreck castaway, we're not quite sure who to thank here yet. Day 82, we finally get a break in the weather and head as far offshore as we can to get away from the crocs and find some clean water to go spearfishing. Day 84, we head even further offshore in search of dog tooth tuna. We have a few hiccups with the salty dingo taking in water, sickness and probably scurvy, but we get the fish of a lifetime to make it worthwhile. Now, day 88, we're camped on another little speck of sand on the Great Barrier Reef, now about 10 kilos lighter and nowhere near the hoped finish line. We're still spearfishing and living from the ocean for food. So let's get into it. Welcome back to another episode, getting back to basics now. After 85 days at sea, living out of a little salty dingo, I think I've found a new favorite spot. It's this sand gate here. Check it out, we've got deep water dropped straight off the edge of the sand cave. Crystal clear, looks like there's awesome coral life. The only footprints in the sand are flipper prints from those of turtles which have come up to lay around our swag. And um, there's a smaller footprints from the booby bird which is nesting here at the moment. This time of the year, the Great Bay Reef is just alive with nesting turtles, nesting booby birds. 
and all the reef fish just off the drop off here have just finished their spawning. So there's lots of like courtship and, and really cool aggregations. Hopefully I can capture that on camera for you. So I'm looking forward to spending a full day on the island today, sharing it all with you guys. And this is really one of the most remote and inaccessible places on the Great Barrier Reef. It's, it's absolutely wild. We've got to spear some lunch because we're literally surviving from the ocean. So that'd be pretty cool as well. It's going to be an awesome day. Hope you enjoy it. All right, let's go catch some lunch. Water looks beautiful and clear. How amazing is the coral life? And the viz is beautiful. He's a lucky coral trout, we're looking for crayfish. Such a beautiful job fish. So asking for it. Oh, he's asking for it, eh? He's so curious too. Yeah, I know. I know. What the hell? That, that big guy just bit me on the fins. <laughs> I heard you yelling and I thought it was like, don't shoot the trout. No, it's a and then I felt something pulling on my fins and I thought you were behind me. So I turned around all relaxed to see you. Fine, yeah. yeah, it was the shark was on my fins. So you didn't see anything. It was huge, it came around you and then slowly beat on your fins. That was so cool. <laughs> that was crazy. I'm just going to do a dive in the jobbies. Get back to shore. Such a good fish. Yellow lip emperor. Has the lipstick on him, eh? Voila. Voila. I went under a coral to hide from me. And I just waited a few 
maybe half a meter above the cloud and then you couldn't see me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so he came out, swam the other way and then saw me, turned around and I shot him right here. Probably would have been a better shot but... It's pretty good through the head. Yeah. Wow, and the sharks were all over it, hey? The sharks yeah. wanted it? Yeah, the sharks wanted it. All right, a bit of a background insight into why we're so stoked with this fish. This is a yellow lip emperor. For anyone who has tried to shoot one, they'll know they're so, so difficult to approach underwater. They're so cunning, so smart. Either rated, in my opinion, one or two in the hardest reef fish to get. And Brand has nailed the biggest yeah. one I've ever <laughs> seen. This is an absolute giant yellow lip ember that I never knew they got that big. Yeah, good job. That's crazy. Time to start preparing dinner. This is obviously the reason why they get their name, Yellow Lip Emperor. Other than that, they look very similar to a long nose emperor that we caught a few episodes ago. There we go. That's dinner. We've got one potato tonight and a, a little bit of fillet as well. So we're gonna do fish and chip as the sun sets. It's gonna be awesome. What's cooking good looking? A yellow lip emperor with bread. Got some chips there. I'm not scared in my face. <laughs> so fish and chips and bread. That's right. Sounds delicious. And then. And then. I've got another recipe. I'm gonna do a creamy garlic and fish. Creamy garlic fish yeah. recipe. Wow. Sounds good. And if people want to um, keep updated with your recipes, how do they? Just follow me for more recipes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed a day on the sand cave with us. Yeah, that snorkeling we had was absolutely incredible. And catching them on film was really, really good as well. And I'm going to get some of that food into me. We'll see you in the morning. Cheers. Sharks coming in here as I've just cleaned this fish. They're that hungry, they're literally surfing the waves in trying to jump on the shore. It's a frenzy! Look at these guys, man. Very cool, at this time of the um, afternoon, all the father booby birds come back. They've been out fishing all day, catching all these little sardines and stuff. They come back, mothers have been sitting on the eggs all day, and then they come and pull in and they have like a bit of a kiss and cross beaks a couple of times, and then they bring back the tucker. So it's pretty cool to witness. I don't want to get too close and disturb them, but I'll see if I can sneak up and um, capture a bit of the courtship on camera. It's, it's such a cute bird. Today we have just moved to a new base camp on one of the most isolated but beautiful parts of the Great Barrier Reef. Check it out, it's just a, a tiny little speck of sand on the Great Barrier Reef. There's no other footprints here, not a person in sight. This really is just unspoiled paradise. I've just anchored the salty dingo out there. It's, it's, it was a long trip this morning. And on the swim in, picked up a, a beautiful coral trout for lunch. This place is just like plentiful, the fish life is amazing. 
Fran is just setting up base camp here and it's coming on lunch time so we're gonna have a massive feast I should say of fish and chips for lunch and then this afternoon we're gonna go for a snorkel check out the surroundings of this sand cave and then later on the Starvo we're gonna go for a fish just off this point there off that point looks like it's gonna be awesome to cast some lures and hopefully have a bit of action so it's gonna be an epic day of course you guys are coming along for the ride thanks for setting up camp done an outstanding job Nice to be eating some coral trout again. The last couple of times we've been out, we've been targeting other more elusive reef fish like buffalo emperor and yellow lip emperor, haven't we, Fran? Far more fun to hunt, but the coral trout, you can't beat it. They're the best eating, easy to fill it, lots of good meat on it, and you can just keep eating and eating and eating. It'd probably be my last meal if I had to choose it. It's so, so delicious. Oh, there's a little reef shark cruising around in the shallows there, picking up the scraps we just left out. We'll jump in and have a closer look soon. eating fish in the ocean. I've never actually personally eaten one, so we're going to try it out. Help you up. Right, we've just been taking the pace off a little bit this afternoon, relaxing, and then we've just noticed the tide is coming higher and higher and higher. And what we thought was the perfect sand K to camp on might not actually be so perfect. So it's coming on six o'clock, high tides not until eight o'clock. We've got two hours left. That tide was out of the Salty Dingo and it's been racing in, racing in. There's not much left of our little sand cat at the moment. We've found the highest ground, but as you can see, there's not much to it. Like it's just like maybe 10 centimeters higher. We've moved the camp down there. Fingers crossed the tide doesn't come up and wash it all away. There's one lonely bird stuck with us out here as well. Surely that means it's not gonna flood. Oh, it's pumping in that way. And the more the wind picks up, obviously it washes the tide in. So hopefully that wind doesn't creep up anymore. So with that black wrasse today, that made number 30 on the species list that we've eaten on this trip. It would have been far easier just to shoot a coral trout and when I was filleting the slippery sucker I was like you should have just shot a coral trout. Very slippery to fill it but hoping the taste is going to make it worthwhile. But yeah 30 different species they're all all good in a different way. I don't think we've had a bad one but um, yeah this black wrasse hoping it's going to be delicious. This is it now I'll just put a bit of a coating mix of flour and um, salt and a bit of breadcrumbs on there. And we're going to get cooking because it looks like an almighty thunderstorm brewing. And uh, yeah there's some flashes of some pretty gnarly lightning coming but whenever there's a storm there's such a good skyline. Hoping we can get the cook in before the rain comes and yeah that wind doesn't really feels like it's dropped down at all it's still howling 
Check out the wind block we're, we're having to work with here. <laughs> Couple of bits of plate coral. Fran doing her best. Good job, Fran. <laughs> Looks like we are about three days off of full moon. Full moon is great for big pelagic fish, big tides, big run. We're hoping to get out to the reef tomorrow if the weather allows, the outer reef. But if not, definitely the next day. And that'll be pretty close to that full moon. So hopefully there's some big fish getting around. So the plan for the morning is, yeah, we're gonna wake up, see if this wind has dropped at all. Um, if it has, we'll load the boat up and head out to the outer reef. We're gonna do a bit of diving for some large pelagic fish and some good reefies and just have an awesome snorkel around there. But if the wind's still blowing, I have to have another day exploring around here and we'll definitely do a bit of fishing tomorrow because I haven't even got a chance to fish off this K yet. We've just spent literally like all day today underwater, which was incredible. The snorkeling off here was amazing. It was, it was really, really special. So yeah, either way tomorrow, it's gonna be a good day if we can make it through that thunderstorm without too much incident tonight. All right, dinner is served. We have got squid in there, so calamari. And we taste tested the black rats and it was absolutely worth the slimy filleting. It is delicious. It's quite a unique taste. Doesn't taste like any other fish. It's very sweet. Hey, yeah. friend. <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna turn off now before it gets too dark, but we'll see you in the morning for another big day of on the water and underwater activities. That's just so good. And follow Fran for more recipes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of colors I don't know where to go See a lot of colors Only feeling blue There's a lot of colors Lost within a haze Don't rely on others to get you through the maze The dreams are not the same for me Standing